You can have mops when dad goes to run errands. Pam Harris lives outside Chicago, Illinois, with her husband and her 25-year-old son, Josh. He has a rare genetic syndrome called Rubenstein TB syndrome. And along with that comes some uh, pretty serious complications. Because of Josh's condition, he's able to participate in the Illinois Home Based Support Services Program, a program that allows him to receive money for certain things, such as personal care and occupational therapy. State of Illinois allows parents to be paid caregivers. Two reasons. One, because there's such scant availability of care providers. And second, the outcomes for the individual with a significant disability are greater because they have familiarity with this person and it's done in the home environment. This program is capped. There is X amount of dollars, specifically three times SSI. SSI is determined by the federal government and at this time I think it's around $710. In the Social Security Act, the federal government caps it can be no more than three times SSI. Josh heavily depends on this program and needs every dollar he can get out of it. But one day, Pam Harris got a knock on her door and Josh's program was turned upside down. It was a Sunday morning and my doorbell rang and there were two young people at the front door with purple shirts on. It said, hi, we're from the SCIU. Your governor has signed an executive order and you get to join the union. Here's a card. We need you to sign this card so our boss knows that we've come, we've you know spoken with you today. Under Illinois Democratic Governor Pat Quinn's executive order, home-based caregivers, in this case Pam Harris and her husband, would be eligible to join a labor union, which would include paying union dues. I don't want my home to be a union workplace. I don't want union representatives being able to enter the workplace, which they would legally be able to do to see if the uh, health and safety standards are, are up to par. Uh, workplaces, union workplaces have to display a union bulletin board, you know, and I ask you, does that go over the family mantle? Um, it, it just is so incompatible to me. So Harris went about trying to stop the unions, adding her name as a representative of non-unions against the SEIU and AFSCME in a union election. And so I continue to call these people and I continued to say, I would like to represent the third candidate on that ballot. You have the SEIU, you have asked me, and there's a third candidate, and that's called no union representation, and I'm going to represent that group. So after all the piles are created, the arbitrator comes, and he has to count all the votes, and he bundles them up into stacks of 100. Well, over 1,000 people voted for no union. My vote was only one of 1,018. Um, SEIU, I think, got 263, and AFSCME got 212. However, Harris's fight didn't stop after the union election. Because unions can hold multiple then, votes, Harris attempted to rescind Governor Quinn's executive order by going to the state capitol and showing a committee the election results. The conference committee the committee, legislative committee, set the conference for my testimony. On the day of the SEIU rally, there were 18,000 SEIU people in Springfield. And uh, the committee was um, called to order two hours late. And we finally were given our chance. There was another group that went up, gave testimony first on a different issue. And then ours was called and I left my seat and I went to go stand up to go sit at the table in front prepared to give my testimony and every democratic person on that democratically controlled committee got up and left the room. The Illinois mother has now brought her case to the steps of the United States Supreme Court where in January oral arguments were heard in an attempt to strike down Governor Quinn's executive order. I naively thought that the union election was going to be the end of it. When I found out that it wasn't. I went after trying to get the executive order rescinded. I truly believed that Governor Quinn was going to say, I didn't know. I have all the information now. Thank you for sharing this with me. Uh, certainly, I'll either rescind the executive order or I will you know, eliminate family members from the executive order. But no. So it was, it was never, ever even a consideration that I was going to sue the governor of Illinois 
SCIU and ask me. The governor cannot decide to make me a state employee strictly for the purpose of unionization. I'm not anti-union. I'm not against anybody's right to organize. Heck, I organized groups of people in this effort. I'm not opposed to that at all. What I'm opposed to are government officials with strokes of the pen compelling people to organize. I'm against money being taken from Josh's supports and services to pay the union. So that's going to end up in the pockets of politicians who promote agendas I don't necessarily agree with. My priorities are Josh. He's my first thought in the morning and my last thought at night. And every night my prayer is to live one more day than he does.